Welcome back, everybody, to the Jacksonville Jaguars franchise here on Madden 21. Today, we resume season number four here with some Week 12 action against the 4-6 and six New York Jets. Our previous game was interesting for all the wrong reasons, so we ended up losing to the Buccaneers 34-33. This is a game where we were dominant for three quarters and had no business losing, but we choked in the fourth. A few big plays really cemented our fate, including the fumble by Coco and Wusu on Tampa Bay's 20-yard line with around 30 seconds left in the game. And Volker Gantz missing an extra point in the first quarter, which is significant because we lost by only one point. So, obviously this is a game we should have won. We've had too many games this year that we play really well in the third quarter and then make it way too close in the fourth quarter. And this time it just caught up to us. Luckily, we still have tied for the best record in the NFL, the best record in the AFC, and we're still winning our division by a lot. So it's not a major deal, I guess better now than in the playoffs, but still not a loss you'd like to see. We do have some good news, though. A breakout opportunity here for the starting tight end, David Njoku. Njoku's had a pretty solid season this year, and he is on a contract year, which makes him especially interesting. If he completes this breakout challenge and gets to superstar development, it's going to be hard to convince me not to pay him. And Joku had his first 100-plus yard game of the season last week. And as I said, he will be an unrestricted free agent at the end of the year. And that's a very tough decision that I'm really not sure of. So if he gets superstar dead, that'll definitely help my decision-making process out. So Orlando Brown, who was, of course, acquired by the Chiefs today. Big move. He, uh, he is available to play through injury, but I don't want to risk it. I think J.B. Givens has done a fine job so far for us since we acquired him at the deadline. So we will keep Givens as the starting right tackle for one more week. But speaking of injuries, we did get pretty unlucky last week. J.K. Dobbins partially tore his PCL, and Bob Adams tore his abdominal. I think Adams is the bigger loss of the two, but losing both of them still sucks. So let's take a look at our opponents today, the New York Jets, who, unlike in real life, Still have Sam Darnold as their quarterback. Darnold has developed into a very average player. He's not bad, per se. 15 touchdowns, 8 interceptions on the year. But he's not great either. He's not leading this team to a Super Bowl. What I'm really intrigued to see is the run game. With Le'Veon Bell out, the main ball carrier will be second-round rookie Reggie Carter out of Alabama, who I'm really excited to see. He was a really fun player to scout. One of the best rookies in this class, so he's going to be really intriguing. The Jets as a whole had a really strong rookie class last year, and although their highest healthy player is only an 85 overall in offensive tackle Mekhi Becton, they do have a lot of fun young players. They have a lot of former Westlake Hornets, including John Paul Patterson, uh, Brandon Flores, Kyle Harris. They also have Avo Ayuluko as their tight end, so I think that's pretty interesting as well as we get this one underway. Or anyone... Here at MetLife Field in East Rutherford, New Jersey, home of the Giants and the Jets. But today it's the Jets who will occupy the stadium with a 4-6 record, hosting the 8-2 Jacksonville Jaguars, who had 8 straight wins going into last week, but obviously lost in dramatic fashion to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So without further ado, let's get this one underway and let's see if the Jags can get back on the win column. The Jets will start this one on offense in early 3rd and eight. For Sam Darnold and crew, Alexander Madison is for running back in the backfield. Expect to mainly see a dual running back set, a little bit of Madison and a little bit of Carter, as that one should have been intercepted in the hands of Julius Williams. Williams caught two interceptions week one, but has not gotten an interception since then. Jags now on offense. Here's Ewell down the field for a big gain to the 47. Wrapped up by former Westlake standout John Paul Patterson. Patterson, by the way, has already made a Pro Bowl which is really cool to see, but a nice gain of 24 there for R.J. Ewell. From a 47 now, short pass up the middle for Casey Shock, who gets a nice gain to the 34-yard line. So far, so good for the Jags offense. Only three minutes in. I don't want to jinx it here, but the Jags appear to be in control to start this one. And then an out route here for D.J. Shark, who brings it to the three. And the Jaguars are very close to this end zone and an opportunity to take an early lead. First and goal at the three. Coco hands it off for Dethion Riddick, who will find the end zone for a touchdown. Riddick is really going to have to step up with J.K. Dobbins getting injured. Riddick looked good in limited action last week. He was actually better than R.J. Ewell, the starting running back, for what it's worth. So I'm curious to see what Riddick does these next few weeks with no J.K. Jets have it on offense. It's, it's Reggie Carter, the second-round pick out of Alabama. With a big run to the 35-yard line. 
good game there for Carter. And the Jets are starting to do some damage here on this drive. It's now second and 10 from the 35. Darnold looking to throw it under pressure. He is sacked by Calevon Chason, his eighth of the year. Obviously, the Jags' pass rushes had their good moments and their bad moments. The pass rush is currently in a little bit of a slump. Only one sack in the past two weeks, including zero last game against the Bucks. Third and 16 now from the 42. Darnold deep ball for Zay Jones, and he just throws it away. Sam Darnold currently 0 for 4. Not a great start for the former Trojan. And the Jags have it back. Third and 2. A sharp pass up the middle for Chark, who gets the first down. But DJ Chark is injured on the field. He will be out for the game. He suffered an injury last week against the Bucks in the fourth quarter. Did not return. So that's two straight games with injuries that will keep him out for the rest of the contest. But this week's injury might actually be a pretty big deal. Casey Shock with a nice run to the outside. With no more DJ Chark today and possibly going forward for the next few games, Casey Shock will have to step up as the alpha receiver on this team. Third and six, Coco trying to get it to, it looked like Antonio Gandy-Golden, the pass is incomplete. 47-yard field goal attempt for Volker Gantz, and it is wide left. Not even close, no good. Volker Gantz had only missed three kicks going into last week's game against the Bucks, but he missed the extra point, now misses this one. It appears that the elements are playing into this game, and the score remains 7 to nothing as the Jets get it back from the 46, third and inches. Darnold, a strike into the hands of Jamison Crowder for the first down. Unfortunately for the Jets, offensive tackle Chuma Idoga is injured on the play, and that'll do it for the first quarter. 7-0 Jags, not a bad start, but already a missed kick from Volker, and already a pretty significant injury with DJ Chark. Early in the second quarter, actually the first play of the quarter, here's a nice play by Zay Jones. One of a rare bad plays by Zaire Wiggins. Usually Wiggins would be locking him up. Wiggins currently leads the NFL with 11, yes, you heard that right, 11 interceptions. And then on third and seven, the rookie out of Stanford, Avo Eyaluko, with his first career touchdown reception. And the Jets tie it up at seven. Good to see Avo making some plays, even though there may be salt from me that he did not commit to Westlake, but that's neither here nor there. Third and seven, Coco trying to get it to shock, but he throws it away. And it seems like the tides of this game are starting to shift towards the Jets, really ever since Chark got injured earlier in the first quarter. So the Jets have it third and ten. They do not get the first down there as A. Luco is wrapped up at the 35. Big tackle by Zaire Wiggins. And the Jags get the ball back. Both defenses currently hot at the moment. Play action fake for Ewell here on first down. A deep ball for David and Joku down the field. And he is brought down all the way at the 26-yard line by Blake Cashman. A big gain for David and Joku for his breakout challenge. He needs 150 yards or three touchdowns. I think the 150 is a little bit more realistic. And then here is Zeke Bowman for the touchdown. The Colonels get the girls, they say. Zeke Bowman with his second touchdown of the year. He's going to have to step up, of course, with Chark being injured. So now it is 13-7, and unfortunately the game will remain 13-7. Again, wide left. What is happening to Volker Guntz? He has missed the same amount of kicks in the past game and a half that he had missed in the first nine games of the season. And at least those first three misses, they were all because it was too deep. But this is just, his accuracy is not good. Third and eight, there's a nice play by Alexander Madison, the former Viking, for the first down, breaking away from defenders, gaining around 19 yards. Now second and 10 from the 45-yard line. Darnold looking to throw it. It's a short throw for Evo Iluko, fighting his way for the first down. I don't quite think he got it. Nice tackle by Bleet Fryerwood, but still a good play from Iluko. That sets up a pretty big third and inches. It's a handoff for Reggie Carter, who gets the first and more. Carter! Breaking away to the 28-yard line. Some scouts gave him Derrick Henry comparisons. Obviously, both coming out of Alabama. Both possess that power. And Carter showed it on that play. He's already over 50 yards on just six carries today. But Carter's not the only running back who's playing well today. Alexander Madison into the end zone for a Jets touchdown. And New York can take the lead as long as they actually make the extra point. A nice play for Madison. And it is now 14-13. The Jets are up here at the two-minute warning. Second and eight, nice play there by Casey Schock. Good first half so far for Schock, who, as I said, he's going to have to step up with new DJ Chark for the rest of this one. 
Third and six. Coco, a bomb for Bowman. Perfect throw, but it's broken up at the last second by Kevin King. That was a really good throw by Coco and Wosu. What could have possibly been, but it remains 14 to 13. The Jets have it with a minute to go before halftime. Third and one. Darnold, a huge conversion into the hands of Zay Jones. Why does Zaire Wiggins dominate number one receivers? And then today against uh, Zay Jones, of all people, is where Wiggins chooses to not play his best game. A little bit odd, but oh well. From the 39, it's a short pass for Madison. Madison breaks the tackle from Harris, wrapped up by Josh Jordan Jr. at the opposing 47. Now down to 18 seconds. Jets still have a timeout. Third and one. Darnold, a short throw for Madison that should push them into field goal range. Very smart play by Darnold. And the field goal unit will come out here to possibly make it a four-point game. This one from 43 yards out. The kick is nearly blocked by Josh Jackson, but it is good. 17-13 to 13 is your score. That's Greg the Leg Zerline, the veteran kicker, who drills that one. So that'll do it for the first half. The Jags really started off well, but I feel like the DJ Chark injury was a major momentum shifter, and it's the Jets who now lead by four. I guess the Jags can't really blow a massive lead since they were never up by more than seven, so I suppose they have that going for them. Let's advance to the third quarter now. The Jags do start with a ball that is pretty important. First play of the quarter, it's going to be a handoff for RJ Ewell. Ewell with a nice juke wrapped up by John Paul Patterson and others at the 38-yard line. Really good to see JPP uh, developing into a great corner here for the Jets. He was certainly a fun player at Westlake. Third and 11, Coco going to try to run from the first down. He's unsuccessful. A great tackle there by Dante Worthington Jr. That will force a punt, and the Jets get it back. Second and eight from the six. Short throw here for Jones. Zaire Wiggins nearly jumped the route for what would have been his 12th Interception of the season. Just crazy how good he's been. Even though today he has not been all that impressive. Nice gain of 11 for Alexander Madison. I'm surprised to see that the Jets rushing offense is as good as it is. With a fairly weak offensive line. And two running backs who aren't rated super high. But they are just torching this Jags defense. Again, another nice run for Reggie Carter. Who has 73 yards on only 8 carries. And Alexander Madison has provided a massive spark in the receiving game. Not to mention he has 50-plus rushing yards and a touchdown. So this rushing defense has to figure it out. And right as I say that, they force a loss of two on Reggie Carter. Nice tackle there by Miles Jack. Jack has been a little bit disappointing this season, and it is a contract year for him. I wonder if the Jaguars will end up paying him big money or letting him go, especially since they have to pay Josh Allen as well. Speaking of Allen, he hits the quarterback there. Darnold just has to dump it off short for Madison, and he does not get the first down. So that sets up an interesting decision here. It looks like the Jets are going to go for the field goal. A 56-yarder for Zerline, again, nearly blocked, but the kick is no good. Neither team has kicked the ball well at all in this game. Both Zerline and Volker Gantz have missed two kicks each, I believe. And the score remains 17-13. to Coco and Wosu here on third and one. A deep ball for Njoku, and it's caught. What a grab by Njoku. He mossed John Paul Patterson there to get it to the 17-yard line. A huge play from Njoku. He does not have a lot of catches, but he's had a few big ones. 150 is very realistic. And then on second down, it's the Mook man. Mookie Baker with the touchdown. And the Jaguars are back on top. The undrafted rookie out of Grambling State. He stepped up when Casey Schott got injured a few weeks back. Now he's going to have to step up with DJ Chark getting injured. Look at this. Trey Burton was wide open down the field. That could have been a gigantic play for the Jets had Darnell not overthrown him. And it is now third and seven. We'll see if that play comes back to bite them. Darnold, a deep ball downfield, and it's broken up by Wiggins. I think Zay Jones was playing the role as the corner there, and Zaire Wiggins was playing the role as the wide receiver because Wiggins has had gotten so many interceptions this season. He practically is a receiver. Second and eight, Thomas loses a yard on the screen, courteous of Kevin King. That'll do it for the third quarter. We've got ourselves a tight battle. The Jags currently on top, 20-17, to but this game is far from over. Third and nine, Coco and Wosu going to try to... Scramble with it a little bit, and he will take his time with a dime into the hands of Joshua Thomas for a big first down gain. Third and 10 now from the 32, trying to get it to shock, 
but it is broken up. That looks like it was Kyle Harris, another former Westlake player. So here's a 49-yard field goal for Volker Gantz. This time it's wide right. What is wrong with Volker Gantz? I understand it's rainy and windy here, but he has just been a disaster the past two weeks. NFL kickers are a very weird subject. The Jags are certainly not going to cut Volker Gantz, but this is very bad to see. Big catch by Iggy Luko, pushed out of bounds by Zaire Wiggins, but a nice first down conversion nonetheless for the Jets. Second and 10 now from the 40. Darnold, short throw, back to Evo Ayuluko, who's had the best game of his young NFL career so far, bringing it to the 27. I guess it's not a surprise he's dominating against the Jaguars, considering he's a tight end, and this team still cannot cover tight ends worth a down. Second and 10 from the 27. This time it's Alexander Madison wide open for the touchdown. Madison has scored twice today, one rushing and one receiving touchdown, and New York is on top with just under seven minutes to go. That's plenty of time. The Jags don't need to panic, but they are in a little bit of danger. First down, Coco scrambling to the right side, going to run for the first down. Jukes out John Paul Patterson and runs out at the 46-yard line. A big run there for Coco Unwosu, and the Jags are going to move closer and closer down the field. Now past the 50. Following play, a big sack for Jalen Ferguson for a loss of 11. Massive play there from Ferguson, and it's now third and very long for Jacksonville, third and 21. Coco trying to fit the needle for Ewell, and it's incomplete. Nice deflection there, multiple New York defenders in the area, and the Jaguars decided to punt it. We'll see if that decision comes back to haunt them as on second and 10, Reggie Carter gets nothing. Wiggins with the initial contact, they're going to give him credit for the tackle for loss. Vander Esch in the area as well. That brings us to a massive third and 11. A first down conversion here would be huge for the Jets. A stop would be equally as big for Jacksonville. Darnold connects with Zay Jones again. Another rare bad play from Zaire Wiggins. Wiggins has probably had his worst game of the year in coverage, which doesn't say a whole lot because, I mean, opposing number one receivers have gone to Wiggins Island all season. But Zay Jones, of all people, is the one who does really well against him. First down, a big sack for Bleet Throyerwood, the second-year defensive tackle for Manitoba, Canada. That sets us up now to a third and six. Jags out of timeouts, so if the Jets get it, it's game over. Darnold connects with Madison, and that will do it. The Jags will lose their second straight game and will fall to 8-3 and three on the season. Certainly a disappointing loss here for the Jags, and again, it's because of the kicking. Now, last week, I don't really want to blame Volker Gantz. He only missed one kick. The game was still tied, but today he gets the full blame. Two missed field goals and an extra point. He was bad, <laughs> to put it nicely. He was very bad in this game. So, the quarterbacks were both pretty good. Coco and Wosu was not why we lost. He wasn't outstanding, but he was fine. Sam Darnold really struggled early, but he played a lot better down the stretch. RJ Ewell had a nice game. I wish we gave him the ball more in the second half. Reggie Carter and Alexander Madison were both great. Madison with a big impact in the receiving game as well. And shout out to Avo Eluko, nine catches for 95 yards and a touchdown. David Njoku only had 109 yards, so unfortunately he does not complete the breakout challenge. A uh, few sacks from each team, no interceptions, and obviously Volker Gantz, 0 for 2 on field goals, 2 for 3 on extra points. Not his best day. <laughs> Definitely not his best day. So he's missed more kicks in the past two games than the first nine games all season and again he's been perfectly accurate this entire season but all four misses the past two weeks have been because of accuracy and obviously on the injury front we have some bad news DJ Chark has pulled his groin he is going to miss the next three games and he will not return until I guess week 16 if my math is correct so certainly a big loss there obviously Casey Shock's gonna have to be the alpha and then Zeke Bowman, Joshua Thomas, Mookie Baker, those guys know they have to step up. Antonio Gandy-Golden as well. Hopefully we can get a big contribution from him. So we're going to be without our best offensive playmaker for a majority of the rest of the season. Now, luckily, we do play a bad Texans team in Week 13. They're 2-9. and nine. This is a perfect opportunity for us to rebound because we need to. We are still the projected one seed despite our two-game losing streak. But had we won those games, we will be sitting very pretty for the top seed in the AFC Conference. So the Colts and Titans keep winning games. I'm not worried about the AFC South yet, but we did choke a pretty bad 
uh, lead last year in the AFC South division, and we only got a wild card spot. Obviously, we still beat the Texans in the first round. We got revenge on them, but still, we can't let the pedal off the metal quite yet. We have to keep going forward, and I don't want another Week 17 game where if we win, we win the division, and if we lose, we don't win the division. I'd rather have it secured. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you have a like button and subscribe. I'm out. Deuce.